What is happening? Ooh, man. Some good things are happening for the New York Knicks. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> look at that score. 145-101. Season high for the Knicks. And look at those two guys right there. Those are two second round picks. Second round picks for the New York Knicks. Mitchell Robinson returns. His first game back, he looked good. He looked really good. And the other guy, Miles Deuce McBride, who probably should be renamed Miles Splash McBride. This dude just connected on nine three-pointers tonight. Nine. On the next game after Dante DiVincenzo, his teammate, broke the single game record for the Knicks, he almost is right there and with nine. Things are beautiful right now. Enjoy this moment. We, as Knicks fans, have suffered so long for times like these. We've watched other teams celebrate. Other teams enjoy a taste of greatness. Well, here it is, right here for us. This is outstanding, and we are just kind of getting there right now. There's 10 games left in this season. We still have two other incredible players to return to the roster. Right now, the New York Knicks are in third place, sole possession of third, because the Hornets took care of business against the Cavs tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so hyped. I'm so high all day. I've been like, from this minute I woke up, I've been on cloud nine. I can, I kind of, I can see, I can see the possibilities. And the possibilities are outstanding. The possibilities are exactly what we've been wanting for, for a very long time. And they're right here. The New York Knicks. The way they just took care of business in Toronto. Now, the Toronto. Let's be perfectly fair to uh, the, the the you know the poor Toronto Raptors. They are completely decimated injury wise. Uh, our former uh, Knicks uh, R.J. and I.Q. are didn't play. They're missing Scotty Barnes. Uh, they're missing uh, uh, Bo uh, Bo uh, Boucher. I think that's what you say, Boucher and and Poitel. So they're they're. I mean, they're missing basically uh, four of their starting five. But there were times when the Knicks were missing four of their starting five. And yet, here we are in third place. Outstanding. Let's get to it. I got highlights. Let's get to it. But before we get to the highlights, let's recap this. 145-101. Mitchell Robinson returned tonight. And he played. I, I mean, I was kind of shocked at how effective he was. In his 12 and a half minutes, uh, he was a plus 14. Eight points, two rebounds for him, uh, two blocks. And what's interesting is immediately watching the game. This is why you have to actually watch players play. The stats don't tell the whole story. Several times, Raptor players tried to go in. And I, I wouldn't say they, they were, they, they actually, it, it, they were, they, they, <laughs> <laughs> they drew the unfortunate situation that they were being guarded by Mitch. I wouldn't say they challenged him. The situation was they tried to get in, try to score, and because they see this man, this behemoth, and they remember, they remember, you know, the punishment that he would give them. And they tried to, like, shoot over him. Their shots, they almost hit the, the, the you know, the rafters in that arena. They had no chance of going in. Sometimes they banked, they, like they, they were like bank shots, like way off the top of, of of the backboard, because they had to readjust their release point. That's what I was talking about earlier in the video about Mitch and 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 having less shot block opportunities. It's because they already know what he can do, but the way he can alter another player's attempt at making a shot is just fantastic. This, we, we're in like such a great place right now. The New York Knicks, the fans, the city, anyone who loves basketball and loves the Knicks are in a great place right now. Fantastic. Fantastic. Let's keep going. 
there we are. The New York Knicks solely in third place, one half game in front of the Cleveland Cavaliers who dropped the game tonight to the Hornets. The Knicks are now 44-28, and 28, a 6-11 winning percentage. Uh, 10 games left. Is 50 game, 50 wins within their reach? Absolutely, absolutely. Honestly, I think we're going to go 8-2. and 8-2 and two in the last final 10. The Knicks will finish 52 games, uh, 52 and uh, 30, 52 and 30, which uh, is definitely good enough for third place and even possibly good enough for second place because also on April 7th, on April 7th, we play the final game against the Bucks. It's a Sunday. I'm having a watch party. You guys should join. I'll talk about it later. I mean, who knows? The Bucks might go four and uh, let's see, four and six. They might. It could happen. And if we end up tied with them, I don't know. Wait, do we end? Do we have the tiebreaker? I'll talk about that later. That's that's not even for us to worry about. Second seed is that's just you know extra extra right now. The third seed is really what we want because even though at this point I am I do not fear the Boston Celtics with this current team the way it's constructed and with OG his return impending. Uh, a pending return. I think he's going to return. I think he's just waiting it all out, and I think it's fine. If he comes back for Sunday's game, great. If he comes back for an early game next week, uh, even midway, whatever, that's fine. He doesn't need any kind of, uh, like, like he doesn't need a game or two under his belt. No, this guy is plug and play. He needs no runway. He can just jump in and totally impact this team, take it to that other level. And look at this. Look at this right here. I mean, if you think about this situation, if you think about all the injuries we've had, this is a miraculous situation that we're in right now. It fe it's feel it kind of feels like that uh, that 2020-21 season where, you know, the lowly, downtrodden, hashtag LOL Knicks, where we were, you know, always being mocked, where suddenly we ended up the fourth seed. Now, you know, we lost in the first round to the Atlanta Hawks. And that left, left a little bitter taste in our mouth, but it doesn't... I mean, the reality was that that season felt magical. Well, this this actually doesn't feel as magical because it doesn't come completely out of nowhere. If, if you've been following this team and you understand the quality of players that they have and the style of play. The style of play is a big de deal here. It's a very big deal. It cannot be minimized. The idea that a second-round pick who barely played at all for most of his career, can come in and play 40 minutes. Miles McBride, I'm talking about, shoot 10 of 17 overall, 9 of 14 from the three-point line, can shoot 64.3% Steph Curry-type numbers from the three-point line and still pick up seven assists and three, uh, three rebounds and finish with 29 points finish a plus 40 in the plus minus, the fact that that guy can do that shows how much depth this team has up and down. Even after the trades we've made, which in some ways did deplete our depth, but it actually increased our ability to rise, to rise, to be the best version of what this team could be. But it's also because the coach, the coaching staff, and the players themselves are embracing this new optimized version of play where if a man is open, he must shoot the ball. Has to. The I, I mean, I wish I had the numbers to show you guys, but when someone passes up an open look, it decreases the ability to score so dramatically, even a two-point, whatever it is. In this case, the Knicks are just, they're, they're playing the right way. The new right way. The new right way. Not the Larry uh, Larry Brown right way before, which it's it's still very similar. It's just a matter of where you take the shot. But the way that same philosophy, work, work the defense. Work the defense. Work that shot clock until you get the best open look you possibly can get. Break down that defense. Make them collapse. Make them make mistakes. Make them make the look, look the wrong way. Beautiful beautiful what's happening right now that's why guys like Dante DiVincenzo are breaking records that's why guys like Deuce McBride are becoming their best version of themselves fantastic I could not be happier you you 
as a Nick fan, I hope you're loving this moment. Nick's muse perfectly captures this. Now, be cocky. I, I get it. I, I wouldn't necessarily want to say that, but be happy. Other fan bases clowned us for years for our incompetence. Be proud. That's the key word. Enjoy this shit. Enjoy this shit. Enjoy this good shit. This is the time. We have been clowned. We have been dragged through the mud. We were, we were, and, you know, justifiably, we were a terrible franchise for two decades, despite one little blip when Melo came in 2013 and we had Tyson Chandler, you know, and uh, Amari. Besides that, but that was never going to last. This, the way this team is constructed, the contracts, the type of contracts, the type of players, the age, the timeline that these players are on, this could last for a while. And plus, we got ourselves several picks, some good first round picks coming up. This, and I trust our scouting department to find us quality players to, to join this type of roster, to have the same kind of mentality that these guys have. I, I, honestly, I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm loving this. I'm loving this. I mean, I could just stop this recap right now. That's how that's how great this moment is. Uh, all right. So I tweeted this out. <laughs> so at some point during the game, there's a sick, demented little part inside of me that wants a Knicks versus Lakers NBA Finals. Don't bookmark this. Ignore this. I'm going to delete this. I'm never going to think about it again. But wouldn't it be fucking wild if it happened? I know Adam Silver would love it. I know ABC and ESPN or whoever the hell carries the finals would love it. I know basketball aficionados would love it up and down no matter what. LeBron James going and, and AD going up against the team he probably should have chosen years ago. That would be drama. That would be ratings. That would be must-see TV. But we got a long way to go. A very long way to go. I know what I'm saying right now. I know what I'm saying. I'm not jumping. It's, it's, I don't need to jump out a window, bro. This is a very real possibility. Julius Randle. OG Ananobi. They're coming back. All right. Here are the stats. Let's get to the highlights. Here we go. <laughs> the Knicks. Got off to a tremendous start. Uh, this game was basically over in the first quarter where the Knicks uh, <laughs> uh, scored a season-high 45 points in the first quarter. They scored a season-high overall for the game, 145 points in the game. They shot 80% from the three-point line in the first quarter, 8 of 10 from, from the three-point line. Uh, they shot 71% inside the arc, 17 of 24. They only had three free throw attempts. Uh, they were all Isaiah Hardenstein, and he hit them. Beautiful. Uh, 12 assists in the first quarter. 12 assists. There have been games where the Knicks were in the teens for total games in assists. Now they get, they're get they oh, oh, almost hit the teens. Almost hit the teens. Just one shy of the teens. But double digit in the, in the first quarter. That was fantastic. Uh, 45 points. Uh, only committed four fouls. Nine rebounds. Beautiful. And it saw Mitch Robinson enter the game at around the seven-minute mark or so. Actually, it was about five minutes left in the quarter, I believe. Uh, what a beautiful sight to see him hit the court. But this guy, Deuce McBride, in that first quarter was just lights out. He played all 12 minutes, hit six of eight from the three-point line, 18 points. 18 points in the first quarter from a second-round pick who wasn't even in the rotation at the beginning of this season. That is beautiful. That is why I love sports. I love this is this is why I love sports because someone who could just believe in themselves, work their asses off even when things aren't looking good for them and they look like they're stranded out there, they're just, you know, you know, eating peanuts on the end of the bench. Then, you know, about a few months later, here he is contributing to a playoff run. 
this is a beautiful moment. Oh, man. Shout out to uh, Walt Perrin and the staff that drafted Deuce McBride. Uh, I, I, you know, I mean, I. You know, I was. I mean, I don't do it as much anymore, especially because the Knicks uh, haven't been, um, you know, using their first round picks that much. So I haven't spent as much time in my draft analysis. But back then, I did. And when I saw him play, uh, I saw. I watched his footage, and I watched him in some games. I was like, God, this guy. I think this guy can be a pro. You know, I, I mean, I didn't see this though. I'm, I'm telling you, frankly, I didn't see this. I saw him as like a lockdown defender who can sh hit a couple of buckets here and there when you need it. But this, this is a testament to his work ethic and his belief in himself. Fantastic. But it wasn't just him tonight. I mean, many guys, many guys. I mean, tonight we had uh, six players in double figures, beginning with Deuce, 29 points. Jalen Brunson, which one thing I got to say, don't want to bury this uh, part of it because I was beginning to get a little concerned about Jalen's ability to finish was once he touched paint. He seemed like he wasn't getting quite enough lift. His touch was a little off. Uh, it, it just he didn't look like you know the Brunson who had one player of the week. You know, so I thought maybe he's a little fatigued or whatever. Well, tonight in his 28 and a half minutes, he shot 58 percent, 11 of 19. Beautiful, uh, 26 points for him and picked up seven assists the new york knicks as a team got 37 assists <laughs> that is awesome that's almost double what some what they get sometimes gotta say that guy grady dick toronto got themselves a very good player i i could see him becoming an impact player in the future i really like his player look the toronto raptors they they might actually it might even be as soon as next season they get scotty back RJ, they have a full uh, beginning. They can start to training camp with RJ and IQ. Uh, they got Poitel, which I'm not a big, necessarily a huge fan of his, but you know, they have him. He's effective, and they got Grady Dick, and they got uh, 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 Trent Jr. Now they got uh, Olinick. I think they're going to have a nice little team for next year. They'll probably be competing for like an eighth seed, a seventh or, or eighth seed next year, but not this year. Not this year. Look. Ooh. Where are we here? In the third quarter? Oh, this is where the Knicks were just just started pulling away. Here we go. I love this guy's name. What's his name? Free Freedom uh, Freeman. Freeman Liberty. <laughs> That's beautiful. Oh, man. The New York Knicks got 42 rebounds. They almost got more assists than rebounds. 37 assists, 42 rebounds for the Knicks. Beautiful. They went to the free throw line 16 times, connected on 13 but they shot 50%, 50% from the three-point line, 22 of 44. They put up 44 three-point attempts connected on 22. That's, wow. Now, you know, can they do this against the Bucks? You know, doubtful, doubtful. You know, this is a depleted team, but do they have the ingredients that can come and, you know, stun the Bucks? Absolutely, absolutely. They are, they're, so ready for it and the beautiful thing is that you see the chemistry guys are finding each other in you know in their sweet spots uh what are we, okay. they are their chemistry is reaching a, a level of like it's almost like pure instinct they just know where someone's going to be they actually sometimes pass the ball to a place where the player will be and that creates an even more open look i see that often between uh, josh hart and uh Dante, even with Brunson and Dante. Oh, look at that. He got a uh, deuce. I think he got blocked, but then it ends up in a three-point make anyway. Well, this is garbage time. Yeah, this is garbage time. All right, let's get back to... Uh, where does get here? Precious. Precious had a nice game. He was 8 of 13 in his return to Toronto. He uh, had 19 points. 12 rebounds. He had a double-double. He led the Knicks in rebounding, so good for uh, Precious. Uh, OG had a little video tribute for him as well, which was nice to see. Very classy. All right, now we're back at the beginning. Let's go over here. Whew. Look at that. Look at that. The bench. Bojan Bogdanovic. 16 minutes. 7 of 11. 4 of 5 from 3. 18 points for him. That's great. 
We need a relaxed Bojan. All he has to do is catch and shoot, and he was doing it tonight. Like sometimes, I, I couldn't even believe how quickly he was releasing it, and they were they were going right through the net. Beautiful. Uh, the other thing to note here is, uh, I think I pretty much captured everything. Let's keep going. The plus minus is just, <laughs> it's an, it's it's like, you know, it's like an orgy of pluses. Look at this. Uh, everyone's in a plus minus. The only one uh, not was uh, Dia, uh, Dia Kite, who came in garbage time, but he was just, you know, an even. Beautiful situation. Uh, Josh Hart uh, picked up 10 assists, led the team in assists tonight. Excellent. In his 35 minutes. Toronto Raptors. Uh, the only thing of note here is Grady Dick, uh, 10 of 18 in his 30 minutes, uh, 23 points. Beautiful for him. Uh, the team comparisons. I mean, this is just looking at a bloodbath. Uh, uh, points in the paint. Knicks won that. Uh Knicks only committed 11 turnovers tonight. Uh, assists, 37. They were plus 6 there. Rebounds, 43. So they were plus 15 there. Just everywhere you look, Knicks dominated. The largest lead was 44 points. Beautiful. Hey, I was talking about the Bucks Watch party in Los Angeles. If you are in Los Angeles, come join us. We are going to party our asses off. We're going to celebrate just the season itself, but also hopeful, hopefully celebrate a win over the Bucks here Sunday, April 7th. I'll be there earlier, so uh, you know I'll have more information about the details, but uh, there'll be uh, giveaways. It'll be a blast. It's going to be a good vibe. Definitely come if you are around and available. All right. Thank you so much for watching this. Again, my name is George. Please subscribe. Hit the thumbs up button, and I will see you in Drop your comments. I want to hear your thoughts and feelings, and I will see you around the next bird.